Welcome friends. In this video, we will learn about the phasor relationship between voltage and current and the power. And we will also learn about the power convention. So we know that the power can be represented into active, reactive and apparent power. And the sign of power could be plus or the minus. So we are always confused what's meaning of plus P and what's meaning of minus P and what is an active and reactive powers. So in this video, we will go through and we will learn in a simple way that how these things have the relationship all together. So first of all, we will see a resistive circuit. So in a resistive circuit, the voltage and the current both are in phase. In short, you can say also that when the voltage is at zero, the current is also at zero. And at the 90 degrees, when the voltage is at the maximum value, the current is also in the maximum value. So both are getting their increase and decrease at the same time and both are in phase. So you can draw the waveform of the resistive circuit by just showing two vectors. One is a vector for or phasor uh, which is basically current and another phasor is a voltage and both are in phase and both are rotating with a frequency or uh, with a speed which is equal to omega that's equal to 2 pi f t. So this is a representation for the phasor for the resistive circuit. So how the power is being shown here in this resistive circuit we will see. Well for the simplicity you can uh, find out the power in the resistive circuit in a very simple way. You just need to draw the waveform. So let's draw the voltage first. So I will draw the voltage. And then you need to draw the current. So I will draw the current by green. So both are in phase. So you can see here. This is the, the current. So this is the positive side and this is the negative sign here. So we know that the power in a circuit is equal to V into I or you can also call it S is equal to V into I. Here we have cos of phi and here we do not have anything. So here you can see this, these are the instantaneous values that are being shown here. So this blue color is showing the voltage and the green color is showing the current. So we have plotted the instantaneous values. Now if you multiply the instantaneous values together, you will get as a, from this formula V into I just multiply it graphically here. So you can see both are zero here and both are positive here. So V is positive and I is positive in the first half cycle. So you can see the power will be look like this. Because V is positive and I is positive. So S will be positive as well. And it will be equal to the product or multiplication of voltage into the current. So here this point is pi by 2 which is 180 degree and this point is pi which is uh, this point is pi 180 degree and this point is 2 pi and this is pi by 2 90 degrees okay in the next half cycle you can see the direction of current is changing which is minus and the direction of voltage is also minus so if you if you multiply this s will be equal to minus V into minus I. So we know that minus into minus become plus. So again you can see S will become V into I plus. So we have minus into minus and if I plot the power again, so the power will be in this direction. So you can see the power is in the both half cycles is positive here you can see the P this is our power P and the P is positive over here for the both half cycles in the resistive circuit so we have resistive circuit so just now you can remember if P is positive it means that circuit is absorbing or consuming the active power it is consuming the power and the power that is being consumed 
is called as active power. Another thing you can see the direction of power flow is only positive for a complete cycle. So it means that this power that is flowing from the generator to the load, the power is only flowing from generator to the load. So only in the one direction. So for first half cycle, it is plus means the resistor is consuming and generator is supplying. So if you see, if you measure the power here, if you have a power meter over here, you will get the plus P value, for example, plus one kilowatt. And if you have, you install a power meter over here, this generator is supplying the reactive power, uh, supplying the power, which is basically a active power now. So you will see the sign minus P means it minus is indicating that this generator is supplying the power. So this is the relationship of power in the simple resistive circuit. Now if you come to the inductive circuit, so you can see here in the, in the inductive circuit when the voltage is at 90 here, the current is at zero. So you can see the current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. So this is a waveform for the inductive circuit. Now we will see the phaser. So you can see this is the phaser for the inductive circuit. So you can see at the instant when the voltages are at 90 degrees. So you can see this is the instant we are talking about at the time or at the angle zero degree. At that point the voltage is at 90. So you can see the voltage is shown here at 90 and at this instant the current the current is zero here current is at the zero degrees so we have shown the same over here so you can see at this instant voltage is at 90 and the current is at zero so if we assume that this vector is this phase is rotating anti-clockwise so you can consider two person which are basically running in a circle and here you can uh, you can see that voltage is leading here or you can see the current is lagging behind the voltage by an angle that is 90 degrees so coming back to our discussion about the power in this inductive circuit so if i draw the inductive circuit let's draw and use a very simple principle by multiplying the instantaneous values and trying to find out what is the power in the inductive circuit. So if I draw the power in the inductive circuit, so let's draw it. So you can see this is uh, the current. So I am doing drawing an approximation. And this is, for example, the voltage. Okay, so let me take voltage by blue once again or let's draw the current first with green. And then we will use blue for voltage over here. So use the blue, max, minimum and then max. So we have the voltage, this is the voltage waveform by blue, this is the current waveform and at the instant zero you can see here the current is at zero degrees. So this is the current at zero degrees and voltage is at the 90 degrees. So you can see these phases are rotating. In this direction so you can see the voltage is leading the current by 90 degrees or current or you can say the current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees so let's now draw the power for the inductive circuit so here you can see for first quarter cycle this is pi by 2 this is pi and this is oh, this is pi and this is 2 pi so first, first quarter cycle you can see here 
the voltage is positive and the current is also positive so you can see you have to multiply at the point you can see both have the zero values so one one our current has zero and voltage is maximum so s is equal to v into i so when uh, angle is zero the voltage is max and current is zero so s will be zero as well so the waveform will look like this so waveform will be look like this for the first quarter cycles both signs are plus for the next quarter cycle you can see voltage is still plus but the current is in the minus value you can see the current uh, is uh, okay the current is still plus but the voltage is you can see is now reversing so in the first second quarter you can see here the voltage is minus now and the current is still plus so if you multiply plus into minus it will be minus so you can see for the next quarter cycle the power is in the minus direction so similarly for the next quarter again you can see the from 0 to 90 and this is from 90 to 180 and then from 180 to 270 so you can see the sign will be negative into negative voltage and current both are negative so you can see the power will be positive in this case s will be positive and again you can see here in this from 270 to 360s you can see here that voltage is positive and current is negative so plus into minus so the direction of power is in the minus direction again so you can see for the inductive circuit the power is no more in one direction the so power is first quarter cycle power is is plus s is plus then s is minus then plus and then minus so you can see we have an alternating direction for the power in case of inductive circuit what does this plus and minus powers is, uh, is showing in this diagram it is showing for the first quarter cycle the inductor absorbs the power from generator and stores the power in the, in the uh, inductor itself stores the power in the next quarter the inductors transfer the power back to the source and in this way the power is keep on pulsating so there is no consumed power in the inductive circuit rather the power is being pulsate or it is become like a shuttle is going and coming and transferring itself from the source to the inductor and source to the inductor so if you measure the total power sum of the total power for the complete 360 degree cycle the total power will be consumed power will be zero in inductive circuit in a pure inductive circuit because there is no power true power that is being transmitted or consumed by the inductor there is some power that is being stored in the first quarter cycle and then again sent back to the source because s is uh, minus here so in the next quarter and similarly in this way this sending and receiving of power is taking place so inductive is in working in this uh, fashion so here you can see we have shown the vector another thing to note here at the zero degree instance so if if i want to show the vector at the 90 degree instance uh, when the degree is 90 degrees so what what will be the uh, value here so if i take this factor back here in this reverse direction so i can also show the vector diagram in the way i can show vl here the voltages and i can also show the current here i so this is an another as instant or the another way because the rotors are keep on rotating but you can see this direction of rotation is anti clockwise and voltage is re leading so now for you can consider two person are running in a race anti clockwise 
and v is always leading so you can show this vector as well in this direction that v is 0 and the current here is at minus 90 degrees or it is 270 degrees so actually you can see this point you can catch from here the voltage is 0 here and here the current is at 270 degrees or you can say minus 90 degrees so in this way you can plot the phasors in the inductive circuit now we'll come to our the next component so here you can see this is the waveform for the capacitive circuit so you can see when the voltage here is zero the current is at the 90 degrees so you can see current is leading the voltage at the instant when the voltage is at zero degrees the current is at the 90 degrees so this relationship continues and here you can see when the voltage is at zero the current here is shown at the 90 degrees so if we draw the waveform instantaneously and we draw the power for the capacitive circuit so let's draw and see the power relationship in the capacitive circuit <coughs> so let's draw first the current or let's draw first the voltage <clears throat> so this is the voltage waveform and then we will draw the waveform for the current okay so if you are calculating the power which is vi I want to calculate instantaneous power so we just need an approximation to understand how the power is behaving in the capacitive circuit so you can see for first quarter the voltage and current both are positive so the direction of power will be positive in next quarter you can see the voltage is positive current is negative so direction plus into minus will be negative and in the next quarter both are minus so direction of power will be positive because minus v into minus i minus into minus is equal to plus and again in the last quarter this will be in the plus so you can see we have finally this is the power here this is the voltage here this is the current here you can see here the current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees in the capacitive circuit and you can see the power here is basically pulsating once again so in first quarter capacitor is absorbing the power in the second quarter cycle capacitor is sending power back to the source so it means that power is basically coming into the capacitor and going back to the source so there is no consumption of power in the capacitive circuit pure capacitive circuit so this is the relationship of power in the capacitive circuit now if you like to com compare the power in the capacitive and inductive circuit so we have this is our capacitive circuit okay so let's draw also the inductive circuit here so let's draw the inductive circuit as well so now we have drawn for the inductive circuit the waveform so this is inductive circuit So we have taken voltage as a reference and we are starting voltage both voltages at zero so when the circuit start here you can see the voltage is zero and current here in the inductive circuit is lagging by 90 degrees here you can see the current is leading by 90 degrees and here you can see the current is lagging by 90 degrees so for the first quarter you can see for the inductive cycles so you can see here the voltage is positive and the current is negative so for first quarter 
the waveform of power is plus into minus plus v into minus i as in the first quarter will be plus v into minus i so s will be minus so the direction will be negative so similarly for the next quarter voltage and current both are positive so direction of power will be in positive apparent power and similarly the next quarter it will be minus and then again next quarter it will be plus so this is very easy to understand now so now you can see here that in capacitive inductive circuits the power direction of power is totally opposite so you can see here in the first quarter if we have a capacitive circuit it is absorbing the power the direction of power is plus in first quarter whereas the direction of power is minus in the first quarter from the inductive circuit it means that when the capacitor is absorbing power from the generator <coughs> the inductor at in the same time is supplying power to the generator so both powers are in the opposite direction that's why the concepts comes for the power factor improvement for example if you have a generator and you have a inductive load so as per our diagram if the load is inductive then there will be some power consuming uh, coming and going back and forth from source to the inductor but if you install a uh, equivalent amount of capacitor with inductor in order to improve the power factor as we know then this in in the capacitor will supply can supply the power to the inductor so if the cap both are, both have the same capacity ideally the generator will no longer will supply any reactive power and the reactive power that is required by the inductor can easily be supplied by the capacitor if it is meeting its value and you can use the power of generator because generators have uh, was applying some reactive power so this capacity of generator is become free so you can apply this capacity to supply the megawatts at, at other load centers plus the line losses because you can see this or reactive current is flowing from the load inductive load to the source and there will be losses that will be i square losses in the line in, uh, and in the generator as well so in this way the things works and this is an excellent representation and understanding of the power for the inductive and capacitive circuits now coming to the pq plan so now you have very good concept what's the meaning of p plus p minus q plus and q minus so if the p plus means circuit is absorbing the power and if p is minus man uh, it means that circuit is supplying the power <coughs> if the q is greater than 0 means it's plus then it means that circuit absorbs the re uh, uh, reactive power and i is i lacks v so if q is greater than <coughs> 0 it indicates a lagging or inductive load when q is minus it indicates the that circuit is absorbing the power it's injecting in a, uh, saying that current is leading voltage and this happens only when the uh, it's a capacitive uh, load here as you can see so again you can see here <coughs> this is an uh, the pq plane has four quadrant one is p is plus one is p is minus so when the p is plus it means that circuit is absorbing the power it is in deck is working like a load here so it's consumed power which is shown in, in p plus and if the p is minus it is saying that the power is being supplied so it's an a generator action so this is this minus p is showing the generator side so it means that minus p quadrant 2 and 3 basically they are representing a generation is taking place at this point so it means that you are exporting the power so exporting of the power on the meter will be shown by a minus p value whereas the importing of power will be shown by the plus p value so we have plus p and minus p so two quadrant 1 and 4 uh, are the quadrant of the load or the motor action and the quadrant 2 and 3 will be the quadrant of generator or you can see generator action 
Similarly, Q plus, if the Q is in plus, then it's indicating the inductive power. Okay, and when the Q is minus, then it's indicating that it's the capacitive power. So this is the theory that I hope that you have uh, learned and a lot and you will not forget now the concepts and relationships from where it came and how the reactive power and active power works and, and how you can draw the power for active and uh, for the inductive and capacitive loads. Thank you very much.